a non-tonal language sounds like. Buah, tía, no te vas a creer lo que me ha pasado esta mañana. Que la verdad es que me estoy riendo ahora mismo, pero no tiene ni puta gracia. Pero bueno. And a tonal language sounds like. Papá, yo creo que la es el primer lugar de la tienda. Y es el lugar de la tienda. Esto es muy importante. No me lo In fact, the percentage of tonal languages among all the nose languages is as high as 60 to 70 percent. Furthermore, these languages are spoken by more than 50 percent of the global population. But what are the differences between a tonal language and a non-tonal language, such as English? What are the most popular tonal languages in the world? And more importantly, how does learning tonal languages affect our brains? Are we getting smarter or just more confused? Let's figure it out in this video. Tonal languages use pitch to distinguish meaning at the word level. This is different from non-tonal languages like English, where pitch is mainly used to convey emotion, emphasize a point, or differentiate a statement from a question. And this use of pitch in non-tonal languages is known as intonation. Welcome everybody! Enjoy yourself! Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tonight Show! You're here! You made it! Thank you for watching at home! On the other hand, tonal languages use pitch to distinguish meaning at the word level. So, if you get it wrong, we may have no idea what you are talking about. Ma means mother. Ma means hemp. Ma means horse. And ma means insult. So, you can I ni the Ma, ma. That means love your mother. You can also I ni the ma, love your horse. But you should never ma ni the ma ma. That means insult your mother. Okay. Imagine using the wrong word for ma when you want to say mother. It could lead to some family drama. And languages with this feature are common in East and South of Asia, the Pacific, Africa, and the Americas. But even though they are all tonal languages, different languages have different types and numbers of tones. The most widely spoken tonal language, spoken by more than 1 billion people, is Mandarin. <laughs> Mandarin has four tones, but if you thought Mandarins were intimidating, you haven't looked into Cantonese yet. Are you joking? What? Is it a language spoken primarily in Hong Kong, Wan Chou, Macau, Singapore, and a few other places by around 6 million people? Cantonese is even more complex than Mandarin, with 6 to 9 tones depending on the dialect. This Mac is one of the most tonal languages in the world, and here are the 6 basic tones in Cantonese. Uh, uh, uh. Like music to my ears, and here come my marathon Vietnamese. Tôi tên là Nguyễn Thị Hai. Năm nay tôi 73 tuổi. Tôi có năm đứa con. Đứa nào cũng dễ thương hết á. Sau này lớn lên, đứa nào sẽ nuôi mẹ? Vietnamese have six tones in the northern dialect and fewer in the southern dialect. Interestingly, the pronunciation of tone names reflects the pitch you want to use for each tone. Dấu huyền Dấu huyền Dấu hỏi Dấu hỏi Dấu nặng Dấu nặng Dấu sắc Dấu sắc Dấu ngã Dấu nghĩa Another tonal language definitely worth mentioning is Thai. Hôm cháu chẳng ạ Nốc thì từng từ cháu ạ Another 
I love it because it sounds so cute. Spoken by 60 million people in Thailand, Thai has five tones, mid, low, falling, high, and rising. Can you hear the difference in the tones? My, 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 my. Easy way. I really love Thailand, it's culture, and the amazing friendly people. That's why whenever I've got free time, I kick my laziness aside, grab my phone and learn Thai with the Link app for at least 15 minutes. สวัสดีค่ะฉันชื่อยุนะคะฉันเรียนภาษาไทยมาสอนบีแล้วภาษาไทยน่ารักมากนะ。It's just my little bit Thai and you should be excited now because it's time to find out how learning tonal languages affects our brains. There are regional structural differences in the brains of speakers of a tonal language. For example, Chinese compared to speakers of a non-tonal language. For example, English MRI brain scans were carried out on 31 native Chinese speakers, 7 English speakers who had learned Chinese as adults, and 21 multilingual Europeans who did not speak Chinese. The results identified two brain regions where Chinese speakers had significantly greater gray and white matter density than those who did not speak Chinese. And you know what is really amazing? The effects were found in the native Chinese speakers as well as in the Europeans who learned Chinese as non-native language as an adult. So we see that these changes in the brain of tonal language speakers were not due to ethnicity, which means it doesn't matter what you look like. And this also tells us that the brain have neuroplasticity or the ability to change its structure throughout our lifetime. So you're never too old to learn a language or a tonal language. So why not click the link below, download the link, and try learning one of the tonal languages mentioned in the videos just to satisfy your curiosity. Mm, what do they really sound like? Thank you and I see you in the next video. Bye!